sponsorship administration paperwork and another nomination for the MS awards from Stephen Pupper. And I forwarded that to Barry Kelly. That's it. Okay. Okay. Any other items? Any other Do we have a motion to approve the treasurer's report? Okay. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstain? Okie dokie. Uh, we'll bring up the budget in a little bit. So we'll be moving on that today too. The Medical Advisory Committee. Is that Mr. Gill? Okay. So, anybody with Sunco? Anybody know anything? No? Okay, then we'll move on that. Wait until either Brian gets here or uh, Greg shows up. Does anybody have any report for your county EMS? The only thing I got is uh, obvious, uh, for uh, stress, they had four responses uh, for, for aid and then anything else related to us. Okay. Do you have any information in regards to this uh, Erie County Ambulance deal that you want to share or not yet? Uh, Mr. Gill said there would be more to follow on that. Okay, so that's a not yet. Okay. Sure. Okay, thank you. Carol? Yes? I have questions related to the um, ambulance service. Do you want me to hold them until we do business if you have any agenda or should we have first? Why don't we? And or the systems committee. Okay, and that would be fine. Wyoming County. I'm um, just uh, looking forward to summer. Um, we doing some pretty good work with our recruitment retention committee. Um, last weekend, or two weekends ago, was the fast meeting event. Uh, it went fairly well uh, for the departments, departments that participated in it. Um, fast 
they step up to the plate and they said they're going to provide everybody 500 bucks if they participated. Um, they cut checks at $1,000 a head. So that was a surprise to everybody. So um, very much appreciated, and that needs to be used for recruitment and retention. Um, starting the process of getting ready for our summer events and whatnot across the county. Um, our peers uh, uh, team, we call it the first, the Lyman County first team, um, is coming together. Uh, we've got a list of candidates and uh, start reviewing them uh, starting next week. And uh, moving forward with creating a team and then getting them appropriately trained. Again, that's just a, a peers review uh, for uh, somebody to reach out to and talk. It's not replacing them with a debriefing team. We use your hands. I've also uh, been working on uh, the JNC and T class uh, for uh, later on, uh, early, late summer, early fall, um, for a while ago, kind of working in conjunction with the area. Okay, do you want to address the state of the Wyoming County Ambulance Service or not? Um, we're still moving forward. Uh, basically, the operations unit in general stay the same, the same look. Um, we are going into a contractual agreement with the Northern Rural Ambulance. We're going to lease their equipment uh, starting whenever we come up the date. Hopefully, the beginning of July is the last word that was out. And um, so we'll be leasing their ambulance, we'll be leasing their personnel, and um, be responsible for supplies and refueling and everything. Um, we'll be providing a 24 7 uh, paramedic ambulance uh, based out of Warsaw in a 16 hour day, seven days a week. Paramedic level ambulance based out of shelter. Um, where we are right now. And basically, if that's going to alleviate a problem that New York State has with us and vice versa on um, the billing process that has been in place for ever since we started the paramedic program. So that's going to be our off of our back. And then, uh, hopefully, we'll continue looking at other options down the road. This is not. Right now, does it appear that there's going to be any CON questions coming out of the county? Out of Wyoming County, regards to this? No, we have a seal in the county. Okay. Okie dokie. Okay, anything else? Um, no, that takes care of it for now. Okay. Uh, any questions for Bill? Okay. Western New York stress, uh, you stated you had? Four responses last month. Four responses. Was that for all of Western New York or just for? For anybody that requests Western New York stress, yeah. Okay. Any questions? Okie dokie. Then we're going to start right in the committee reports. Budget. We did late this afternoon send out a copy of the tentative proposed budget for 2023 through 2024, which starts July 1st of this year. Um, I have to say, the, and it was reviewed by the budget committee members. Uh, the, only, the only difference in the budget from this year is the under contractual services, University Emergency Medical Services for UEMS, the contract was $1,620 less um, than we originally had anticipated. And that those monies were taken out of that line item and put into education and training. So that is the only difference from this, this year's budget to next year's proposed. Um, unless anyone else has any other suggestions at this point, um, I know there might be some requests possibly for training or I'm not sure. Bill, did you have something that you wanted to bring up for next year's budget? Or? Um, a couple things that we've been kind of tossing around. Um, if there's unexpended money for this year's budget, you know, we could uh, possibly uh, put that towards uh, the Wards Bank with the security facility is a possibility. Also, um, we've been working with uh, UBMB on, uh, usually it's the spring uh, CME event um, held in Wyoming County. Um, due to uh, the lack of getting doctors that were available to participate in uh, working with Rob, we uh, kind of really moved that to the October timeline. Again, we would need a secure facility and you know, possibly you know, maybe site them with some presenters or get some high end presenters for that event as well. So, uh, to me, that, that's a possibility. Uh, another thing, again, 
support the recruitment retention efforts, um, something possibly to work on that. And then um, another thing uh, we've discussed in past meetings is to um, maybe move forward and uh, provide some money uh, to get our website up to uh, 2023. It's pretty far, pretty outdated. The system itself is and the site, um, as you see it today, um, is very outdated. Those are some thoughts. That As far as the, what do you, the awards training, the, uh, we have typically voted to a lot of monies towards the either deposit or the fee for use of a hall. And we are able to do that as long as there's some sort of training, some speaker that is involved. Um, last year it was $750 that went to Hillcrest for uh, rental of the hall, staff to set up and take down tables and chairs, access to the kitchen, and post event cleanup and any support during the event. So that is something that we would like to do again this year out of this budget. I would state that when we get a final number, then we can act upon that. But that right now could stay in under training and edit due to the fact that hopefully we have an educational speaker for the awards. And it is, it is actually, there is an amount still remaining in there that's budgeted for that purpose. It's just to let everyone know. Right. And that event won't be too long. Right. But we do we do pay that ahead of time and to hold the facility. For an extra budget? For I meant we pay that now. Right. The payment of the fee so they can get a letter. Contract with their church. Sure. Yeah. That would be a good idea. Okay, any questions? Okay. Uh, for may I? Sorry. For the CME event, is that something we need to just wait on to your point to see if, about the facility and you'll let us know? It would be basically the same type of format. Um, it would be held in a commercial facility. Um, as far as uh, awards banquet, that's uh, last year we went to Hillcrest. Uh, this year we got to set up a little spread to go. I got the date saved there right now. And uh, at that point, it will towards that. The CME is a little So to date, we've looked at um, Berkeley, uh, which we've done that before, and we've also had discussions with uh, Beaver Hollow for rental or use of their facilities. So if there's some money that needs to be expended, my thought uh, process wants to, again, secure the facility, do the down payment thing, and then uh, we can't use it for food or anything like that. And then move forward. Okay, for the 23-24 budget, which would be July through July, may I have a motion to approve the budget as proposed? Okay, done. Right. Yeah. In a second? Bill. Okay, all in favor? Any opposed? And he had to stay. Okay, okay. That's passed. Um, basically, how much money right now, Madonna, is budgeted for training and ed that we have not spent? Uh, okay, so in other words, if we need to do some rentals, mm -hmm. now would be the time before the beginning of July. Yes. Yes. Do you anticipate using all of that, Bill? I do not believe so. 
Okay. Um, I don't, I'm not sure where that's going to be. I've been trying to get some numbers, and that's going to be part of it. Um, the presenters, historically, we don't usually pay presenters, but if we can bring somebody, a high-end presenter in, or maybe, you know, uh, shake the carrot and, you know, in front of some other presenters, maybe be more participation. Okay, and that could also come out of next year's budget also. Correct. Okay, so I, I was talking about this year's. Okay, but if we could get some... Right, for, the, for the facility, we may be able to nail that down before the end of this budget year. Um, yeah. That could work for that. As far as the presenter and stuff, we don't know who they are or what it's going to be. We will be able to spend that out. Okay. And, uh, um, thank you. So the other option for the remaining trading money is to allot to UVMD for the learning management system $1,250, which would be one half of their $2,500 cost. The other half will be uh, paid possibly by Big Lakes. Is that right? Good. Um, in regards for their learning management system, that all providers in. Uh, under the program agency will have access to. So what is your pleasure on that? Anything that may have? Brian? Just a question on the LMS. Is it a group platform for managing the New York State CME process? It's through CypherWorks. Um, Rob, Rob McCartan did a lot of the, the work on it, so I'm, I'm just kind of learning through the system right now. But it is uh, through CypherWorks, so it's integrated in with you know what's on the Vital Science Academy and collaboration and all that stuff. So, um, and it's a platform that can be built up to. And the way we have started building it um, is uh, there is you know agency admin, there's regional admin, there's UBM MD admin. Um, so, you know, it can be built up to that point. Yes. So, so you as a CIC could actually put classes on there as well. Um, so from what I am understanding, the answer to your question is yes. And it will come cost to everyone in the region or no. funding this will be free to everybody? Right. Currently, um, UBMD put up the put up the money for the first year. And um, you know, from what I'm what I'm gathering here is that the conversation between you and Rob was if there was a need to spend some of the money from the region, that's an option. And then they could allocate that money to something else for UBMD. They said the wheels are turning. Is there something else, Brian? The wheels are turning. Yeah, they, they see the smoke coming out of the ears. Um, maybe the I only ask to see if we can get more information about the LMS either from the lab if he's available. Well, basically what he told me when I, because I, I have to have monthly meetings with him, what he basically told me is that if you're already uh, registered in the uh, CypherWorks or Collaboration, that that registration will roll through to this LMS. And like Mike said, it's basically going to be, they don't have anything definitive right now in regards to a learning platform, but things will definitely be added and will count as CME towards recertification. Okay. Does that answer it? No. Oh. I'm trying to understand the larger scope of it, right? Because the idea, if this could be a replacement LMS for EMS1 Academy or um, you know, any of the other I think ultimately that's what they're looking at, but again, it's kind of starting from ground zero right now, so therefore that's not what it is right now, but they're looking at it, yes, placing, doing core classes, etc. Right, there's a lot of classes on there already that you can get for free, you know, through collaboration and all the rest of these, and you can self-decide, but, um, you know, our goal is to add things on there like, you know, the preceptor program, office of workshops, you know, and then, you know, your CICs, CLIs, you know, whoever wants to add on, you can always put classes on there as well. Um, so, yeah, we are, we are building it from the ground up right now. 
Does that answer it better? Yeah. It's, so basically, it's a work in progress. And I just, right. I'm just trying to associate what the funding's for. Like, what are we as a region funding? If it's just a spend down for New York State because we have a gap between spent and 25,000? Yeah, no, it is something oh, no. that UBMD has spent 2,500 for, but it will be available to providers in both uh, our council and also Big Lake's council. And so that's why I'm saying the cost will be in half. So the 2,500 will be in half, 1,250 if they so desire, if the council so desires to contribute towards it. Well, I believe the first year, I mean, we, we've already paid for the first year. And the first so year is from what? Way that's more of a rough question on that because I know yeah, we just paid for it. Yeah, I couldn't get that answer. And it came out of this year's budget for us. So, right. and our budget yeah, year right. ends the end of June. So, what so we would be doing. That's right, their budget is the same. Yeah, yeah. so we would be reimbursing them, is what the point would be. Now, I would have that conversation with Rob. He's, he takes care of all that. Yeah, but that's all. So, we would be reimbursing, is what we would be, okay? So you, I know you would have to get a piece of paper, a bill or a receipt or something to that effect. I understand that. So, so what is the council's pleasure on this? I'm sorry, I, I might mis be misunderstanding here. So what is this going to give us the option to do or the general EMS community to do that they can't currently on one of the existing elements? Well, at the end of the day, hopefully at some point, the agencies aren't going to have to pay for all of our systems. Um, but, you know, currently, it's not built up like in EMS1 Academy or right. Right Solutions, right? Um, so, I mean, right now, once it's built up the way it says, UBMD put the bill for it, so it's, like, totally free. So, um, you know, once it's built up, I mean, there, there's no cost to it from the provider standpoint or an individual agency standpoint. So then ultimately it could replace what the agencies pay now. Like we right. pay $75 a member right. for Target Solutions in a year. Yeah. This this potentially, once it's built up, would replace that yeah. cost That's to us goal. and it would be free. That's the goal. From what I've interpreted from the whole situation, that's the goal. Okay, question? Uh, oh, okay. I'm, that I'm was good. I'm good. There was a question, but I are you good now? Okay. So, what is the council's pleasure? Rolling on. Yes or no? I don't comment. I believe it's going to replace Target Solutions and all the other platforms, and it's going to become a no cost for all the agencies as well as the providers. I don't see too much negative on it as long as it works in the same format. It meets the New York State requirements for CMP when they submit the paper. Right, that's not going to happen right now, but that I is what is planned yeah. for yeah, in the future. Right, and, ju and just like any other LMS system, the CIC still has to review the material. Right, they got to as a CIC, you still got to review it and you got to sign off on it. So, just a statement I think it's wonderful, it's an ambitious goal. I really think it's unlikely we'll be able to support all the providers in the region for $2,500 simply on a data storage perspective. That, that price is pretty unlikely, not impossible. Um, that, that said, I'm not opposed to us doing this. Um, what I like more, Mike, that you said, what is the opportunity to create, like you said, regional leadership programs, collaboration, shared information, protocols, policies, right. REMAC content, you know, any REMAC specific education. I know um, Mill Rems rolls out stuff through collaboration a lot with uh, Dr. Cushman and that team. So, you know, supporting from that perspective, regional education, I think it's a worthwhile endeavor. We'd love to hear more in the future about this, but I'm in favor of, at 1250 supporting this project to hear more about the progress and the objectives in the future. Is that a motion? I can make a motion, it's not. Okay, motion. <laughs> <laughs> Do I have a second to the motion, Miss Ann? I saw that hand go up first. <laughs> okay. Does anybody have a conflict? Okie dokie. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? I need something right for a motion. Oh. Not just a motion. Okay. What is our motion to do? Move that we contract with UBMD for $1,250 to 
to support a regionally accessible learning management system. Thank you. Okay. And any opposed? Okie dokie. Okay. Anything else on the budget or anything else? Okie dokie. Sounds good. Okay. Membership. Erie County currently has 13 members, three alternates. Wyoming County has 11. Um, I have pending applications from Alan McClethan, Jeff Sagoda, and I received one from uh, Ricky Shaw, who is an AEMT with Holland. So there's three pending for Erie County, and I have a resignation from Laurel Pearl, Wyoming County. What Laurels came through before? I don't know if you brought it up. Um, I found it. Okay. So we have one opening member for Erie County, correct? Yes, we can move one to an alternate position. And Alan McClethan was the first submitted application. Okay. Yes, Brian. I believe in our last meeting we tabled those applications pending review of the bylaws and our shift in potential um, seat structure. Okay. So I think those are still tabled. Okay. Unless somebody moves to pick them up off the table and act on them. That would be the pleasure of the council as to what they want to do. Personally, I don't have any problems with multiple members coming from the same company or agency because we have that already. I was going to say, don't we already have that? Yeah, we already have that. So, so I mean, Madonna and I are both from Bliss, so you got. Right. Two of your executive officers coming from the same department. Yeah. Of course, we don't bother to talk to each other until we have meetings. Beside them. <laughs> <laughs> so personally, that I don't see a problem with it. <clears throat> you know, I mean, with Ann, we got Ann and you know Laney sitting there, and it, there's multiples that are and or with the same paid agents. So, so um, that's why I'm asking what your pleasure is in regards to all of this. If you want to leave those membership applications table, or if we want to act <coughs> upon them. McClinton is from Twin District. Yes. Which will put Twin District at three. That will put Twin District at two. Right. Zagoda would be the third. Zagoda would be the third. Yeah. And we already have a number of I'm from Twin Districts, so I'll stay out of it, but we already have a number of people from the same agencies. Right, right. So. Do you recall, Brian, what the bylaws were looking at? Um, I don't recall the top of my head. I just got we had to report. Yeah. Who's who's doing bylaws now? Wasn't Eric doing Brian. Okay. Brian is the chair of the committee. Unless you want to Yeah, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> that was a quick answer. <laughs> yeah, but we'll get to the bylaw report in a little bit. We'll get to the bylaw report in a little bit. But right now, the question is what do we want to do? Do we want to remain with these applications tabled or do we want to move upon them? I move we keep the table until what needs to be worked out is worked out. Okay, we have a motion to continue to keep the membership applications table. Do I have a second to that? I'll second. Okay. Rob Tatarka? Tatarka. Tatarka. I kill names. That's my mission in life. Point of order, just make it easy. If that's the motion, you don't get a motion. They are tabled until somebody moves to pick them up off. Oh, okay. Okay. We'll leave it at that. Okie dokie. And so, and we're good with membership in, do we need to move somebody up from alternate to full membership in Erie no. County? Okay, and we're going to have to put another cry out for Wyoming County for members. So, if you can remember to pull Jay at the Wyoming County EMS Council. Uh, anything else on membership? Systems Committee. Okay. Training and Ed. Chris, for right now, you are technically in still. Yeah, I don't have any report. Okay. Bylaws, Brian. So I 
uh, reviewed the bylaws draft that I received from the attorney after uh, Mr. Burke's resignation. I'm going to distribute that uh, tonight or tomorrow to the members I have of the bylaws committee. Uh, I show the members as Blaney Brandon, uh, Dan Rogers, Carol Your ex officio member of Hulk, uh, Crystal Tatarka, and Don Turner. I don't show any of the members. Is anybody else here interested in? Working on bylaws with that too? Oh, I have to go to the uh, survey and see, but I think there was a couple of others. If there are, if you want to let me know, I'll distribute them. If you appoint yeah. them, I will distribute to, that, to them as well. Yeah, if somebody is, talk to Brian and have them distribute them to them, okay? Yeah, I know, I will. Yeah. But we'll just get those in here. So, I, I have that draft. Uh, our attorney, Kevin Mahoney, is more than willing to join us on a Call. I think that the best use of our time and energy at this point is um, to have a bylaws committee meeting review the changes that were proposed in March of 2020, I believe, uh, see if they'll still meet our needs or if we need to change in concepts. If we don't, we can return it to our attorney to be approved as a form, and then we can read them here for comment and decision. Okay. Yeah, Kevin has been a little bit more responsive lately, so um, it's there's better communication. Okay, anything else for bylaws? Anything else, Brian? You want to say? No, I don't. Okay. We did review them and get to work. That's it. Okay. Awards and public relations. Uh, Greg Gill resigned. Uh, so Bill Stryker is it? Whether he wants to be or not. That's the phone call I got. Um, <laughs> so, uh, nominations are due May 15th of this month. Uh, there's not a whole lot coming through. Uh, so, if everybody wants to send a reminder out, I talked to Rob McCartney today. So, UVMB is going to send another reminder out. And um, I don't want, I'm going to send one out for Wyoming County directly. I'm telling the squad captains, the chiefs, and hopefully get a few more. So. Again, the event uh, will be held at the Strangeville Fire Station August 30th, so mark your calendars, please. And um, we're, as we talked earlier, working on the facility, the dates on the marked anyway, so now we'll move forward with the agreement. And uh, caters, uh, working on fire and caters. Okay, right. any questions for Bill? What? For Bill, point of clarification, Mr. Gill resigned from the chair of that committee or Mr. Gill resigned from the council? And if so, what does that No, mean? he did not resign from the council. He resigned as the chair of that committee. Thank you. Okay. Did you have a question? I saw again go yes, up over. Yes, I gave her a hard copy of one of those tonight. Excellent. Okay. Did you order clocks? Did you call that last call? Yeah. Any other questions? Okay. New York State DOH, Don Trepaz, the face of Ed Major. Ed is finally taking some well-deserved vacation this week, so uh, I am here in his uh, his absence, trying to build his shoes uh, in that regard. Um, if you have not heard, Ed has been recently uh, added more responsibility. Uh, the branch chief uh, position in Syracuse has been moved to the branch chief over education unit in Albany. And so now Ed has picked up the branch chief role for not only Buffalo, Rochester, Syracuse, and now half of them. Um, so he is uh, quite uh, stretched thin in that regard. Um, we have a uh, distro box, if you haven't seen it, um, and you would like the distro box, get it to me, and I can send it to um, Chris as well if uh, you want to add it to the minutes. So we have a distro box um, for our office, so if you want to send, if you send something there, it goes to that distro. That way, based on all of us that are floating all over the world and so forth, someone can get back to you in a timely enough fashion. A reminder on the portal, all submissions now for just about everything should be going through a portal submission of some sort. If that sounds Greek to you, please get with one of us and we'll help you out with that. The program agency has been extremely helpful in uh, coordinating and assisting people with those submissions. We continue to be out in the field doing our uh, periodic field inspections as well as our spot inspections. Um, we recently completed a couple throughout the, this particular region um, and such, and there are quite a few agencies that are um, very significantly overdue in this region, so you will be seeing um, faces from the Bureau. It may not necessarily be the faces you're familiar with. 
Um, we are doing targeted uh, types of things across the state in an attempt to uh, make sure that we're uh, ensuring uh, people uh, people's compliance and agencies' compliance across the state. So um, just be advised, just because you see one of the one of the vehicles coming or whatever, it may be somebody from Albany or somebody from Merrill or somewhere along those lines. Uh, we have hired uh, two new folks in the Merrill office. Um, so those folks are part of that. They'll probably be out doing some training with some of us um, to do that. Merrill is the Metropolitan Area Regional Office. Uh, next week is the CMAC SEMSCO meetings as well as the staff meeting in um, uh, Albany. So if you are attending out there, great. Um, there will be some webcasts, obviously, for the council versions of the meetings, um, but for anybody that has had the opportunity to be out there, you know that the majority of the business is done um, at the committee levels and such, and so kudos to the folks that have the opportunity to go out there. I encourage all agencies and, and reps to, to have the opportunity to make it out there. Uh, so that will be next week. Uh, I absolutely need to plug the EMS Memorial, which will be on Tuesday of EMS week. Uh, we have a number of names again that will be added to the EMS Memorial. Agencies are welcome to join. There's been uh, different publications that have been out there. Um, if you would like additional information, give it us when we get you that. You're welcome to come out, bring a vehicle, um, stand in honor of those that uh, we are adding to the wall who have uh, given their life and service to this great state um, through their EMS uh, contributions. Uh, let's see here, that, that, that. And uh, I understand, because I listened to the news that the budget passed. I have no information on what was passed in that regard, so I apologize I can't provide you with any of that. I'm sure there will be some level of reporting next week at the CMAX SEMSCO meeting. Um, again, those are publicized, so be, you know, take an opportunity um, to, uh, you know, to, to watch that type of information. I, I think there was some good positiveness for EMS um, that was in some of that. I know some things were controversial and such, um, but uh, if you look past some of the controversial issues, there were definitely some of the positiveness that I hope made it, made it in, um, in that regard for helping with sustainability. So that's a great thing. Uh, and Shante Jackson, our secretary that you've all had the opportunity to deal with, has told us that she is moving. So after 20 years with the Bureau, Shante will be moving uh, with her grandson um, and such. She, uh, her last day is Sunday in June. Um, so we, uh, we will be lacking that administrative support in the Buffalo region. But if you double Shante, you know Shante, feel free to pop her a little message and so forth. I'm sure she would like that. Okay. Thank you for all that you guys do. You booked a great Okay, thank you, Dan. Does anybody have any questions? Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, one correction I saw in the minutes from last month. John McMillan did not resign. John McMillan took a promotional position in a different bureau with the Department of Health. Okay, anything else? Okie dokie. Okay, me executive board. Yes, we've been reading, uh, meeting mainly by Zoom uh, for the executive board. It's been working well that way. Um, we approved IGEL applications for Grand Island and somebody else. North Tonawanda? No? City of Tonawanda. City of Tonawanda? Yeah. Might be the city of Tonawanda. Brian's, Brian's not playing along with for helping me to remember. Uh, the other stuff that we discussed, which was the council membership survey, part us, uh, bylaws update, and we'll be covering underneath new and old business. So I'm going to move on. Agenda, but that's okay. Uh, is it the program agency next? Okay, program agency, Mike. All right, the report's out. Uh, this is Rob's report here. I, I got a couple little things I want to add to, but um, up at the top, of course, is everything we put out over social media and our website. Reminder REMAC credential links uh, that is open now, went live on the 1st. And just a reminder, if you have a couple stragglers, you can submit more than once. Uh, on our side, we can actually see how many times uh, an agency submits. Reminder of the Vital Science Conference, that's going to be in October 19th through the 22nd in Syracuse. 
Uh, hotels are open and taking reservations. If you uh, if you're planning on going, make sure you secure that reservation early. Uh, I want to recap on uh, what Mr. Treep has said uh, regarding the DOH inspections. Um, and I, I just want to also reify that, and, and I know uh, Rob had mentioned this before, if any agency is interested in having UBMD come out and do a pre-inspection, it's definitely not a punitive thing, but um, we have found that it, it usually helps uh, identify some areas that may or may need to uh, be addressed. And uh, we've been very successful with that. Um, so if anybody's interested in that, you'd please give us a call. Either Rob or myself can come out. Uh, still working on the IGEL programs. Um, I did just give um, the chairs uh, some applications for review, East Seneca, Jamison Road, Colden, and Gowanda. Just a reminder on that, uh, it's got to be an ambulance agency or an ALSFR, not a BLSFR agency, and they've got to have all BLS adjuncts. That would include BLS 12 lead, CPAP, albuterol, naloxone, one of the EPIs, and of course, glucose. Policies and protocols. Um, there are some protocols that are be coming out or policies that are be coming out soon um, based on the last leadership meeting with the DOH. So just keep an eye on that on the forms page and we'll push any announcements through our website. A reminder about the uh, Maru, the Maru app. I actually received a phone call from somebody within this region that uh, was looking for the collaborative protocol app, the old one, because they didn't like the Muru app. And I, I just got to reiterate, the Muru is on contract with the state, so that's constantly being updated. The old app is not being updated anymore. We can't like guarantee um, you know, what's information if you're still using it. Um, but the Muru app, we should be able to isolate it down to regions and um, specific agencies, and it, it's very useful. The LMS system, we talked about that a little bit. Um, we've been working on the build up to that. It's separated by county, separated by regions, um, by agencies, and then like uh, EMS coordinators in each county will be able to see each agency within their, their county, um, and we're still building that up. Um, but hopefully soon here we'll be rolling out the registration instructions and our intent is to really put as much training as we can on there. So if anybody has any ideas, um, you know, get in touch with one of us. EMS Week events are being posted. I know I posted a bunch of stuff from Catholic Health uh, through our website and through Facebook. Uh, EMS Week is May 21st through the 27th. The theme is Where Emergency Care Begins. Myself, Rob, and Karen will be on the deck at ECMC um, doing hot dogs on May 24th. Uh, we've got nothing for EMSC, and Don had already talked about the state EMS meeting. Any questions for Mike? I suggest um, the 24th for events. What's that? For EMS week just May 24th. Right? That's the only day we're going to be up there, right. yeah. Yeah, the rest of the hospital systems we've been posting through our website. Okay. And on our website, too, Mike has been updating our website, so if you log on to our site, it's going to look a little bit different. And there was a lot of old links on there that really had outdated information. So anything that is by remac the links have been redirected to the remac redirected to the state we're not duplicating anything and having a risk of false information being out there on our, on our website directly um, but if you have something going on for recruitment retention anything like that you want to post it out i know i posted a lot for wyoming county um, even individual agencies from wyoming county has reached out to us and we put it out there and we'll share it i mean we've got thousands of people that we send those emails to. So, um, you know, no problem at all. Get a hold of myself or Rob, we'll make sure it gets on there. Anything else for Mike?
question. Mike, um, regarding the phone call you got on the land, I've had several employees ask me as well. And I think one of the big things that comes up is that the old app has current medical control numbers in it, and the new app, as far as I can tell, does not have new medical control numbers for that. Um, that's a contract with the state. It's got nothing to do with the BMD as far right. as maybe getting those in there. Um, and I guess the second question is, do you guys at the uh, BMD have a list that can be published? We can actually, Muru shows up to the state meeting, so we can have a discussion with Muru um, and, and, and speak with them about that. I know some hospitals, the information is good and some aren't. Um, and you're not the first person who has said that. So, yeah, we'll, we'll look at addressing that. Thank you. Mike, Muru's gotten that report several times, not just from our region, uh, hasn't been corrected. Would it be possible for you to be able to call the meeting? List of medical control numbers that we can circulate. Yeah, you can circulate. we can do that. Thank you. And we'll still have another conversation with Nero. <laughs> okay. Any other questions for Mike? Okie dokie. Thank you, Mike. Okay. Old business. Results of the survey that were sent out to the council members. Well, we got about 12 responses back. Um, Basically, we're still looking at pretty much the same time and the same place on the same day. So, um, if that is okay with people, that was done in order to attempt to see if something was maybe a little bit better for people to attend, but I appreciate everybody who has been coming for, so that we can get forms so we can conduct business. Um, <clears throat> is there any questions in regards, and the survey, what I'm going to be doing for those who put their committee suggestions down. I'm going to be taking that and then doing my committee assignments now since I got a little blasted at the beginning of my term here with part S and everything. So, um, any questions in regards to that? Okay. Uh, in relationship to that with the email, uh, that's one thing why we thought maybe we didn't get back is because people aren't checking their uh, Worms email for the council. I understand it's a pain to have two emails. However, the problem is is that as we are uh, um, subject to open government meeting, that means we are also subject to freedom of information. Information. If we get involved in something that requires for some, that, that somebody is going to foil us for, <coughs> that means your personal emails that this information goes to for the council can come up. That was another reason for establishing council emails is to keep council business on the council email. Therefore, if there's a foil, it can all go for that particular purpose at that particular time. Otherwise, you're going to have to be giving access to your personal email and again, how that works, I'm not sure. I'm not a FOIL expert, but I do know that it can happen. Okay, so I really suggest try to check the email. The council email yesterday. Should we propose a sunset date of using our old email? Uh, we are trying to get people, so we're playing nice right now, Don. Okay, we're gonna continue to play nice, okay? Because we're getting people to the meeting. Email that it's to both emails? Well, I mean, it's a... Three reports or four reports today. My first one. Then. Well, that's because we love you. <laughs> well, none to the other ones. <laughs> yeah, Steve. Really... Yeah, I hear you. I understand, but like I said, it, it's trying to pull everybody into using that email. And like Sue, she just signed up for it today, so we still got some stragglers on that. Um, Steve. I mean, I think that that's point. You could probably just send out general communication first email. So you send an email to your email, please go there to check it, like, because of the survey. Like, quite honestly, that's what prompted me to actually, like, log into it and put it on my Outlook permanently. Okay. Um, so maybe, maybe the communication of, we have sent communication to your council email, please go check and look at it, so that the content is there and kind of directly building that out. Okay. Chris? That's why I sent the emails out to both yeah. council email and your personal email right now. So I know everyone's going to look at the email, but I will send it. Okay. 
And I think we're pretty well up, aren't we, Mike, with yep, everybody's so. being on? I just let know that it's a pain to check more than one email, and I'm there. I have five accounts. I am so there. Okay. Oh, uh, let me see. Part S update. So uh, the budget was approved this afternoon, as I understand it. I got a news alert. Um, I'm not. <clears throat> this information is current as of yesterday, and I don't think that it changed. Um, it sounds like from the draft in Part S, the 3002-1A language was adopted. That makes the SEMSCO, um, it changes the responsibility relationship with the SEMSCO and the commissioner, clarifies some things, and establishes a meeting schedule. Uh, that wasn't a big problem. 3003-1A, that was the REMSCO, it establishes us as an advisory body to the SEMSCO, so they're clarifying that relationship. 3004, which was the performance standards, was adopted. Uh, that'll be created by the SEMSCO in collaboration with regional councils and with uh, the commissioner. Uh, and there's a number of parts on that. Um, but basically what will happen is those standards will be promulgated with the comment and all of those things. Uh, 3020, this goes to some of the funding. This was recruitment and retention. Uh, I don't know what the exact number broke out to be. I believe the funding was listed as 4.9 million and change going to uh, EMS. This is all in there. Uh, so a recruitment and retention um, fund with a public service campaign to bring people into the EMS field. 3032, which was one of those things that was interesting, was the state EMS task force. My understanding of that, again, this is my comment, I'm not positive. Uh, my understanding is that was to smooth the contracting processes to alleviate some of the issues that agencies felt in contracting with New York State uh, during the, uh, the, the pandemic and the services provided and the uh, I believe this just smoothed that out, uh, but not 100%. Don, um, not with you, about 97% of what you said. Well, yeah. no, I think you're, you're, pretty, you're pretty spot on for what the Anything with 3% you said that was a high kick. I got a percentage. You know, like a lot of you did. You did. You were like bouncing. I was watching it. It was good. It was good, Dan. Um, and then um, a little reorganization uh, that had to occur to just move things around. The regional districts are not in the final draft. The change to the CLM process is not in the final draft. Uh, a number of other ad issue items are not. So it looks like some positive changes with some money allocated uh, without some of the larger points of concern that so many people address. And then interestingly, as part of the law adopting this, there is a amendment to civil service law um, where it relates to health benefits. And the amendment, this is, I'm reading the language that's here exactly, I'm not sure this can be the language of the law. Uh, if it is, it's interesting to see how it's implemented. It introduces in the middle of the paragraph about uh, accessibility to the state health benefits, notwithstanding any law or regulation to the contrary, active members of volunteer ambulance companies serving one or more municipal corporations pursuant to subdivision 7 of section 92A of the general municipal law shall be eligible for health benefits regardless of the amount of funds derived from public sources. So it seems oddly specific to volunteer ambulance companies, not fire service or anything else, hmm. uh, and then I'm not sure what that relationship will require in terms of um, the uh, service to a municipal corporation uh, that's uh, under contract, if it's specific to something. So it seems like maybe uh, volunteer services potentially have access to state health benefits now, but it's not clear you know, what percentage is going to be paid for, what they're going to have to pay, what the longevity is, what the contribution is. But it's a lot of work, or will be like this. So, I am trying to get EMS to be sensor services. Nope. Where it had something to do with it previously is there was a bill introduced to give, to, to both codify EMS as a sensor service and give volunteer uh, providers access to, it was supposed to be state pension and state health in that bill. This could be some, some uh, legislative portrait. Yeah. That was left over, um, but there's something left over. I, I have no idea how to operationalize, how to fund it, what you have to do to, to make that happen. It might at this point be field of language, so somebody looks up and goes, wait, you want to pay for health insurance anymore? 
<laughs> I know I'm finding a voluntary guilt service as soon as possible, so I can do that. <laughs> So that was it from part S. So okay. thank you, and thank you, Chair, for your work on it. And your work on it, too. Brian actually started to author the letter, and then he sent it to me, and I edited it a little bit more, and then we finally got it out. So uh, it was a coordination effort. Is there any questions for Brian on that? Okie dokie. Any other new business I forgot? Our old business, rather. We haven't even started on new business yet. Old business. Rob, okay. was, Rob was asking about, I guess he brought up the logos or something? Oh, the logos. I forgot the about branding. the logos. We all got, I know it got sent out, the logos. Um that were circulated at the last meeting. Bossy, oh, you're good. Yeah, and pretty much that first one on the first page with New York State, if you could hold it up and show it around. That was the one that seemed like most people liked. And so if you would like to take a look at them, and we can move on that. We can return to it. We'll table it just for right now, and then we'll return to it before the end of the meeting. Yes, Brian. Could we maybe ask UBMD to circulate a petition on that, and here we can authorize the results of that petition as the no, not petition. Uh, survey. survey. The results of that survey is something like that. Oh, yes, I will. I will do it. I have the results, so I will do that. I meant circulate. This is a survey. Oh. The, the different logos. I think it was. I think it went out right after it did. I have no clue what Rob did. I think I do think that went out right after no, the last. No, never saw it. Oh, okay. Then we will recirculate that again. Okay. So you want you want a survey built on the logos? Yeah. And then we'll push that information. We'll back push that information out if you could put that down. I'll develop it tomorrow. Okay. Logo. Okay, thank you for the logo thing. Getting that in. Okay. Is that agreeable to everybody? I do kind of like a computer survey? Okay, sounds good. Any other old business? I do. No? Nope. Oh, I'm sorry. I put that in new business. Oh, okay. Old business? That's old business. The logo? Yeah, the logo is old business. Okay, new business, eye gel applications. We have more than just Colden. We have, these have all been vetted by UBMD and uh, are determined to be a queen, uh, a queen, goodness, and are determined to be complete. So we have Colden. We have East Seneca Fire Company. We have Gawanda Ambulance Service. And we have Jameson Road Volunteer Fire Company. Is there any questions on any of these? May I have a motion? I motion we approve the applications for IGEL. And Christina was second to her motion. Holden, East Seneca, and Jameson Road. Yep. All in favor? Oh, any conflicts? Okay, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, that's complete and done. I'll take, I'll take care of it. Okay. Next on the list is the Erie County Ambulance Service. I don't know. I have nothing. So, Steve. Um, yeah, I have uh, two questions. And um, can you, um, there was, you know, just some information coming out of a lot of media and things, uh, but um, some vague reporting about what the intent and, and kind of makeup of what the county's ambulance was could be. Um, one, of the, one of the things was that it would be ambulance stationed on the outskirts of the county. Can you be more specific about the like, specific areas, municipalities, townships? Like, does that mean Clarence, Alden, you know, literally around the border of the county or specifically targeted areas? From my 
perspective, and you don't have to excuse my lack of knowledge, I'm being read into this very slowly uh, in my position currently. So the information that was shared, the mapping that was put on um, the media, and the stuff that has been put out by uh, County Executive Polling Cars is the extent of the information that I've been given thus far, unfortunately. I was told by Greg that it's mainly considered to be concentrated south of 28. Yeah, it, it's been one of those vague sort of lines. It was south of 28 kind of means. Um, do you know how many ambulances? I mean, we've been done a number of five units. Is that all ambulances? Is that uh, make up of ambulances? And, you know, County executive reported five ambulances. Right. Do you know if they're all kind of The other thing that was kind of like a big, uh, you know, and I think the intent is to improve upon the EMS shortage and the EMS provider shortage. Um, the way that I interpret kind of the, the quotes and statements that have been put out is to improve on the personnel available to respond and work as it is an EMS provider on ambulance. Um, is the county um, looking at ways to actually to convert credential providers into an EMS provider role in like a full-time status instead of being a credential provider who isn't currently providing, convert them into a provider instead of shifting personnel from one area of one agency to another, which is really just kind of reallocating resources from a high efficiency area to a low efficiency area. I, 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 I read it and I perceive it as the intent is to improve upon the shortage. So how is the county sort of planning to increase the amount well, it's, it's our it's our intent, as, as I'm being told and directed, is that we are moving forward on a core sponsorship change to paramedic level, original, and refresher. And we we'll work with partners, uh, specific education institutions, and those agencies that are willing to participate in that program in development of a curriculum and then deliver that curriculum with providers. Um, but as far as credentialing of active affiliated providers and agencies. I, I don't know what the intent of the hiring process is, as it is a non-competitive civil service. So, so it would be non-competitive. Okay. Correct. Yeah. Um, so going through like a, like a creating a system in which the county is delivering that core content and, and through a paramedic mm -hmm. program, that seems to be a pretty lengthy, lofty goal. And the timeline of this being six months, is that something the county can do without creating sort of an artificial gap in coverage of providers in areas during some of the busiest EMS times in our region, that, five, five months from now. That's, been, that's the expectation of the administration is to accomplish that task. Okay. Education, paramedic education, increasing the number of advanced classes being offered, uh, and then obviously uh, open enrollment, increasing quantities and, and classes offered for EMT basic. All right, so excuse me, just 12 now. The anticipation is you're going to be able to create paramedics in less than six months. No, it, it starts with the curriculum and the program, and then obviously that's the start. But you know as well as I do, you can't turn that in six months. Right, which is why we'll start the education process, and then that will be either a 12 or 16 month paramedic program. But the operational objective with those personnel is to be able to provide service in six months. I've not been given the timeline of providing the service within six months. I have the same information you have from watching WIPD. Right. And yeah. Yeah. We've heard six months. Good. Then that's that's what uh, we're, we're looking to clarify. Obviously, more than uh, I am I'm unable to clarify that. It's just a lot of concerns that that's forty EMS workers that are currently working and relocating them to. And if I believe, like you know, the news is reporting, and, and if that's what it is, and you know, areas south of twenty eight, those are traditionally areas with lower call volume. Lower demand, and really, the only transfer of you know, workers is coming from areas of higher demand and higher efficiencies, and kind of burdening the entire regional system as it is. But I understand you're, you may not have answered to that. Um, the other thing that you've been hearing um, was that there, there are, I don't want to say attempts, but there, there's considerations of engaging with hospital systems to provide resources to hospital systems to make a facility transfer. Is that something that the county is hopeful in accomplishing, of, of, of engaging in that type of relationship with the private hospitals to accomplish their facility transports? I have been made aware of that. Um, I guess, um, Brian, on the systems committee, if you have anything from the um, system or? No. It's 
as far as I know, the council was not advised of the intent planning analysis or structure behind starting an ambulance service. Um, I, I, I was informed about 24 hours before we saw the first WIDB story. I was with Ken when I was informed. Uh, <coughs> not in my role as assistant chair, so I come out and certainly the uh, assistance committee probably should, should ask some questions about what's going on real quick on a regional level and system distribution group. Is it one other question? How are you looking at any alternative solutions to, to improve upon delivering services to people that might not necessarily require an ambulance and which is the only option right now? The only thing that I've been made aware of and that we're actively working on is the accreditation of our MERS dispatch center and the integration and development of the nurse navigator system also. But I do not have a timeline as it relates to that because I know we've been in conversation with uh, Monroe County, for instance, where they have a successful program currently active. And it, it seems to make a difference, not to mention a number of other PSAPs across the nation uh, that do that. But obviously, the accreditation process for MERS to start before you can even get into the navigator side. We've also looked at APCO and other platforms to accomplish that. So the idea is that. Uh Nurse coordinator would be doing that sort of um, like clinical review, like a nurse and clinical review, and then determining from there, or to shunt that to a nurse and provider. Nurse and provider. Mm -hmm. uh, All good? Yeah. Okay. Any other comments or questions or the beat up for Ken with? I guess before asking questions, it's, you don't have any additional information to be honest, but maybe publicly that will this point. Correct. Okay. I won't burden us then. And I take it UBMD hasn't heard too much about it. Yeah. WIBB. That's, that I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was I like, did, what? Okay. I did, while we're sitting here, get an alert for, uh, if anybody's interested to sign up for civil service posting alerts from your county, I got an alert that you can do that now. Okay. God bless. Okay, any other questions or anything on that? Well, this, I think this is going to be one of those type of things that we're going to have to wait to see what happens and if a council decision, policy, procedure, et cetera, is needed or not. And we'll move on from there. Uh, the UBMD MOU, I do believe that did go out to everybody. I do believe, if not, I got it out to the executive. Correct? I received it. You received it, so I think I got it out at least to the executive committee. Did I, Christina? No? Yeah. Um, I might have forgotten to put that out to the entire council, but it would be nice for us to move on that because that is a renewable understanding, memorandum of understanding that will take effect July the 1st. There really is no changes in it, as per se, from the last time that we beat this up and I think finally approved it in the beginning of the year. I think that's when we did it. So it would be nice to move forward with that so that that can be just given a blessing and approved and move on because that's the way that the language states done. Then gave a motion to approve the MOU for 23 24. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Do I have a second? Bill seconds. Okay. Is there any conflicts for voting? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any abstain? Okie dokie. So the MOU is approved. Uh, for number four, I put down, do we want a meeting change for July, as it is July the 5th? And I will be in Maine, which that's fine. Brian can take over. Um, but do we like not want to be meeting the week that week, or do we want to meet the week after that for the 12th instead? for people that have vacation plans or whatever. Steve's like, whatever. The 
the fifth is okay, we can leave it on the fifth. Okay, we'll leave it on the fifth then. Any other new business? Yes. Um, if anybody's familiar with the National EMS Memorial, which is held in July in Washington, D.C. every year, uh, a couple people and myself have been pretty involved in it over the last few years. Um, the moving honors portion, which is the traveling portion with the Tree of Life, um, we were notified last week we'll be coming through Buffalo for the first time uh, this year. Um, we're just waiting on further information on the exact date. I was hoping to actually talk to Tom from AMR tonight because GMR is uh, one of their main sponsors. So, um, it'll be here, we think they're arriving the Tuesday before, which is that week of the 16th, 17th, right in there. Uh, coming on a Tuesday, leaving on a Wednesday, and then going from here to Washington. I'll try and get out more information to the council and to UDMB that they can spread out um, to give them a welcome, and then uh, what the anticipated placement is, where they're going to be, where they're going to go and stuff. But just sort of set the date aside, sort of once I get the information, you can let everybody know so we can give them a welcome when they come and see the Tree of Life and the moving honors memorial when it gets here. And that sounds great. Thank you. Um, one other thing, with the with this part S and also this uh, potentially pending medication law, which we'll discuss in a second, I was thinking of creating a legislative committee for just individuals to be the members of the committee to be kind of keeping their eyes out for any potential legislation that may be in the works to give us a heads up so that we're not kind of like pushing around at the last minute. Part S was actually in, and I'm behind on them, but it was in the November, December FASNI with bill numbers for those changes to um, EMS. Yeah, it was. What, part S? Yeah, part S. Yeah, so the executive part, budget. Part S was in the executive budget. It wasn't introduced as a bill. Right, but there were bill numbers in FASNI, and FASNI was supporting these changes. Okay. So there's... There's a lot of individual bills. I'm going through a pile of 672 of them right now that were reintroduced into the legislature that have the words paramedic, ambulance, or EMS in them. So I'm trying to sort out what actually pertains to EMS and what is just congratulating paramedic right. Susan so Smith on 50 years of service. Right. Is there interest in a legislative committee and people serving on that committee? Should I put it out on the email and see what comes back to me since not everybody is here? Okay, I see some nods. I see some breaks. Okay, the other thing was to moving on for new business is this medication law that was bouncing around. Brian, I'm gonna let you talk about that real quick and because wasn't it you that brought it to my attention? I, no, I believe that was me. Well, actually, Rob McCartan sent that out and I responded. Oh, okay. There you go. I'll let you talk. Yeah, so this is the bill. Uh, it's Assembly Bill A5663, which is in the fourth by somebody in uh, Chandler. Uh, anyways, uh, basically what it says is that uh, the, the, the language is uh, prohibits injecting a person with any substance, including but not limited to ketamine, by emergency personnel, law enforcement, or, or any entity without the specific consent of the individual. Um, and I, I, in my research of ketamine, because I do some work with this and some training with law enforcement, um, I think this is kind of a, a rebound idea that's been coming out of places like Aurora, Colorado, where they've had um, poor outcomes with police encounters uh, during which ketamine was administered to a patient. Uh, and, and in most of those cases, as far as I know, the, the, the medication dose was mistaken or it was given inappropriately by the providers, and I wasn't there, so I can say. Uh, but this, the way this bill is written uh, is very vague. Um, it's, it says, uh, you know, except for um, situations that are, that are life-saving, uh, we can't give medications to people who don't consent for it. So uh, I don't know what your feelings are. 
goods are in the and except and it does state in that though except for life sustaining treatment but then it comes to the definition of what is life sustaining treatment that that was my biggest question you know, what, what does it mean i mean if our, our protocols for example currently say that if somebody is uh, hyperglycemic that we're going to give 400 cc's for saline and move on i wouldn't say that's life saving but it's in the protocol you know so i, I don't know what that means life-saving measures certainly giving narcan is someone's not breathing really life-saving um, but from my research and what i've been you know, experienced to I, I believe that giving ketamine to somebody who's a legitimately going through the constellation of symptoms or excited delirium whatever uh we can call it nowadays i believe that's life-saving also so uh, it, it, there's just a lot of vagueness in this which concerns me yeah, and of course this is being sponsored by a downstate legislator, so um, that's one of the problems is that many times you have individuals that have good intentions to support laws that are not practical and don't make any sense. But that is the problem we run into and that's why I was talking about making a legislative committee in order to keep an eyeball out for these things. Uh, what the executive board decided to do at the last meeting was to wait until the REMAC meeting and see what the REMAC decided to take a position on in regards to this. So that's where we're standing right now because I do believe the REMAC meeting is May the 17th. Is that correct, Brian? May 17th is correct, yes. Yeah, since it's at your facility. So. Um, just a note on this, as I'm just looking at the bill actually um, in the legislative uh, code, there's been no action on it. This is only addressed in the assembly. There is no sister bill in the Senate. Uh, and it was moved to, interestingly, um, was moved to the committee on, I just lost it. Committee on Codes. So it didn't go to health, it went to codes. Um, my opinion on this is it doesn't have any legs right now. I don't think it's worth it's worth monitoring, but I don't think it's worth it. And, and that's what I was saying. We're getting more and more of this stuff, and, and uh, if we need to take a position, it's better to do it proactively than it is, you know, defensively. So that's why I was thinking about doing it. But I'll put that out uh, to an email and see if anybody would like to be on that particular committee if there's any interest in it. I don't want to make a committee if there's no sense to have a committee. Okay? Anything else for new business? If not, I shall entertain a motion to bill. Okay, to bill. Motion to bill. Okay, do we have a second motion to bill? Okay, second motion to bill by Sue. Okay. Thank you all for coming. Please sign in if you didn't sign in. Please, thank you. Yeah, regardless.